these are from I'll put it on the screen where they got these from but this company does like grab bag style so it's completely random and I'm a sucker for mystery boxes like this is a standard one you can buy giant packs of these but they're all gonna be you know plain like this and a lot of these have two different rings on it so I don't know if I should hang something off of there too this one's gigantic. It's a big boy. I could do something very like detailed in that one, huh? I like the designs that they have. <laughs> I just for like adding grip, I guess, when you glue something in there, it'll hold on better, but it also is very decorative and it's very pretty. We got some wee ones with like baby tiny ones. This one gold chrome one. They call it vintage. I don't know if these are actually they're probably just vintage style. This looks like it's supposed to have mirrors and uh, jewels in it or something. Maybe I should have gotten a pack of regular ones because somebody did mention at the flea market that I should offer up custom ones so that people can get custom tiny paintings of their pets or family members, which is a really good idea. Whereas like if they're all different like this, it might be kind of like tougher. This one doesn't have a ring on it. <laughs> Never had a black one before. It's kind of super neat. They usually have one oddball piece, and this one is a key. The last set was like um, it was round on one side, and then it had a pentacle on the other side, and that's beautiful. So those are the selections that I have. Making these little necklaces is such a enjoyable way of making something kind of practical with your artwork and to be able to do it in such small controlled batches like this. I don't have to get things manufactured. You know, it's just me hand making a tiny little painting and putting it under glass. So each one of them is completely unique. Even making these for myself, there is a little bit of pressure to make the right decisions. You know what I mean? All the little art pieces that I make are going to be a little bit random. They're purely aesthetic choices mostly. And it is a little stressful because you know that once you make a decision and you put it in the frame, it's not coming out again. And so you've got this little pendant that is not going to be reused. And so you want to make it the best that you can, which I guess is another reason why it's so great to be able to do tiny little sets and batches like this. I mostly just fill them with little tiny bird paintings. These are a good one. I have a frog in here. I think I did a dog one, although I haven't seen it for a while, so I think that one's gone already. I just trace around the glass and I have to paint within that. And even then, the glass itself magnifies the finished image. So even though they look so tiny in the necklace, they're even tinier inside the necklace. So I've definitely made a few that I just ended up not using. It's not as easy as it looks. Or I just have them just too close to the edge uh, because it also sort of warps a little bit closer to the edge as the glass gets a bit thicker and rounded. So I find they do actually look a lot better on the paper than they do once you put it in the necklace because of the way that it magnifies and warps and um, accentuates all of your tiny little mistakes. And there are lots of ones where I just didn't really like the composition or the use of space or the color. So this could be a really kind of time consuming project, making something and then not liking it and then starting over again. I am using white glue to attach the painting directly to the glass first. Instead of putting the painting in and then dropping the glass in there, I find that this way you can push out air bubbles a lot easier and then let it dry. With the painting affixed to the glass, I can trace around it with this X-Acto knife and trim off any little bits that's going to make it hard to fit inside of the tray. And for good measure, I'm going to add a little bit of this acrylic medium to the back of it because I'm going to be using this E5000 or whatever it is glue. This is a silicone glue to set it in the tray and I don't know if silicone glue has an effect on paper over time. So to just kind of combat that, I'm going to just add a protective layer of acrylic between the two, just in case there's some sort of reaction. When I made the first batch of necklaces, this glue was relatively fresh and it had a good flow to it. 
Now it's much older and it's gotten thick. It's drying out. And so when this glue is fresh, you can put a little bit in and then press down on the glass and it should rise up around the sides so that if there's any gaps between the glass and the tray, the silicone glue will sort of nicely fill them. And that way you're not getting crud in the cracks or anything like that. But this one was really, really uh, thick and unyielding. So I did have to go in afterward and fill in the gaps around it with a nice um, art resin. So that's definitely an option. I'm going to add some jump rings to these and they are ready for stringing up. Here are some of the pieces that I finished and they look kind of cute. I really like the bumblebee and the heart pendant the most. Let me know which one is your favorite, and thanks for watching.